Okay, so Robert, let's talk about cross-linked polyethylene. All right. Otherwise known as PEX pipe. Go for it. Absolutely. So in PEX piping, um, there's uh, the two most common versions. I would say there's there's PEX A. Okay. Um, and a leading manufacturer of the PEX A is is Upinar is is a very uh, common brand I'll see, and how the PEX A is in my opinion, the, you know, the highest quality version and, and most common I see out there in the field and how the PEX A works is and what makes it different from PEX B, PEX A, it, it's an expansion system is used to, to connect the fittings to it. So how it works is this is uh, you could see the PEX A there. I don't know if you can see the writing, but it says it on the side PEX A. That's how you identify it if you're under a house or or working on a job mm -hmm. stamped on it and how it works is we first take this this is an expansion ring here and we go ahead and it only goes on one way you, you can only get on one side of it because the other side's smaller so we go ahead we push this ring onto it there and then we have this this gun this one's by milwaukee and upinar and what happens is this metal part of the gun goes into the expansion ring and we press it and it's expanding the ring and it's also rotating to make to get this guy expanded and it's stretching it out for us and then we take the gun away we take our fitting push it on all the way and it's slowly compressing back to its original original shape dude that is a really cool tool right there yeah no pretty pretty neat so you can see how how fast you know just to do one joint was pretty quickly with the tool wow. and the expansion ring and now that's going to be watertight um you know up to um i think 100 psi i'll have to double check the tag for hot water but even stronger uh, psi for cold water Wow. So yeah, this is a you know a very good system, very fast to install. Um, so again, this is the PEX A system. Now, something very you know important to understand is that uh, the PEX A system, which are and here's an adapter you could transition to copper with it. The PEX A system and the PEX B system they they run off of a different concept to connect the joints together. So this is the PEX A expansion. The PEX B system, you you would not want to use the expansion tool on. It's not designed for that. So it has uh, you know a different type of fitting, and how it works is it's it's kind of a simpler method, I guess you could say, or more basic method. You put this this ring over the pipe first, this metal ring, then you you put the fitting on like that. You slide the ring back over, and then there's a, a tool here. It looks like bolt cutters. Right, I'll hold yeah, this you might have you. to support that. And this is kind of, you know, they sell all this at Home Depot. It's more of like a handyman or homeowner version, kind of, in my opinion. Well, this particular version. And this goes over the ring there, and you go ahead and give it a squeeze, and that's it. So that's a, that's a joint there. Uh, on the PEX B system. Now, yeah, something something I've seen, you know, once on a home inspection was um, whoever was 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 doing the work. They they mixed up the fittings. They had the the B piping with the A system. Ah. So what happened in a scenario like that is it's an improper install they're they're not interchangeable these so because that because that fitting is brass because this particular the b piping is not designed to be expanded with the expansion tool oh so, so they use the expansion tool so, on the b yeah so they the, oh. what i they use the expansion tool on the b and when i was there i, I didn't see it leaking but I knew right away something was off, and and I saw it was PEX B. I, I realized they they use the A fittings oh, on the B system. Got it. So just something to to keep an eye out for if if, if it's a PEX B pipe, you want to see these these rings crimped around the outside of it. These metal rings. When it's a PEX A system, you want to see these expansion joints. 
these uh so the so the one on the outside the one you just described that was wrong had the apex b yeah they had the b but it had the a fitting exactly and it had the a uh attachment exactly so oh, they they okay. mixed up the two pipes and i was actually surprised it wasn't leaking but it's definitely not intended to be like that and i, I let them know that it was wrong and probably so the b is the, is the b just a cheaper version yeah the b is is a less expensive uh yeah cheaper version i would say i would say it's um you know cheaper to to install because you only you know you need this inexpensive so in tool other, versus the electrical yeah. version in other words it's the type m of copper it's the type, type m of pex yeah, yeah i would say exactly <laughs> it's it's the the type n m right. of pex yeah i've i i install um you know a little bit of pex from time to time and i always go for the the pex a and the open r system is my, makes sense my i mean I, I could even do that i i'm i just watched what you did i'm in <laughs> i'm in amazement because i've never seen anybody actually assemble this stuff do you want and to try one, John? I could actually do it. <laughs> Here. <laughs> All right, I need that to try was, one. That's good there. And All so right. what you want, yeah, you want to shove the tool and just pull the trigger until it, it kind of bottoms out all the way and it's gonna what do it like what six or seven you times? know what it might be like four to six times range okay so I just push yep. it and then yep. I just pull push it yep you give it a trigger squeeze and just hold it do like one more okay and then you can pull it out and go ahead and, and slide that in there and just hold it. Just let it hold it for a little, maybe 10, 15 seconds. Let it come back down. Has anybody ever stuck their finger in there and couldn't get it out? <laughs> <laughs> Not that I've heard of, but I think it's it's going to squeeze back down. All you pranksters out there, don't try this. Probably crush your thumb <laughs> if you put your thumb in there or something. <laughs> oh, so, yeah. So now you can say. You oh, know. dude, I could plumb my house now. I'm yeah. serious. This is easy. Yeah. No, it's it's not a, not a whole lot to it. Wow. Wow, I'm impressed. That that is so easy. Yeah, so it is a it's definitely a pretty pretty cool system. And the PEX is it's less likely to get like a pinhole leak like you would see in copper and there's going to be no electrolysis. Right. Um you know cuz it's it's pla it's a plastic. Now this is not this is not supposed to be exposed to the sun, right? Correct. Yeah, I would want this. I would not want it exposed to the sun. This is for under the house, you know, in the attic, in inside the walls. walls. Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely not. Now, the there's sun. a fitting that we probably hadn't brought with us as a shark bite. You know what? I think I do have one here. Oh, great! Because I want to cover that because there's a there's a mixed uh, opinion about using these and where they should be used. And I'd like so, to get I like this you know point that out today. This this shark bite fitting I have here. Um, this is for like a. A lawn, a laundry hose bib okay. here, and how shark bite works is it can work on copper or pex. It can go on either materials, and it just has this this push to connect fitting with a, a rubber O ring inside and a bunch of teeth that kind of hold it in. Okay. So really, what you want to do, you want to you want to take a sharpie and mark the pipe, make sure it's going in all the way before you do it. But just for oh, okay. the, just for example here, we'll show. So you go ahead and you 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 push it in. And boom, it, it kind of sunk in about a half an inch approximately. And that's locked in. You could turn the water on. That's and all you got to do. That's all you got to do with a shark bite. Done deal. Now, shark bites, you know, they are UPC approved, which is the Uniform Plumbing Code, um, which is the standard uh, in California for plumbing installations. Now, me personally, I... I don't use these a whole lot. I can only, only use them in, in a special scenario where, um, you know, other, you know, soldering wouldn't work or I have another system, a pro press system where that was too difficult to get that tool in place. But my advice on, on these fittings is if you're going to install them, um, leave them in a place where they're, you know, visually accessible in the future. Example, I would, I would put it on, I would feel comfortable leaving it like on top of a water heater in a garage or um, at the front of the house where all the piping's visible near the regulator in that area, or even underneath the house in a crawl space, um, you know, where, where it's visible. I don't love 
you know, putting these like in a wall and then covering it with sheet rock forever and no one can see it anymore. Right. right. So I, I, I personally like to, you know, be able to see it in the future. Um, you know, just, it just makes me feel a little better about I, it. I'll tell you right now, I would not put that in my house. <laughs> I see. <laughs> I just saw what you did and I'm like, yeah. no tools required. No, that scares me <laughs> under pressurized pipe. Yeah. I, I, I would not feel comfortable that in my house. Yeah. It, 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 at first, I would say a lot of people would would say that, but kind of, I guess once you use it, you know, a handful of times, you get you get comfortable with it. And Just see don't tell it, me you put it in my house. <laughs> don't tell me, I'll be sleeping. Like yeah, on. we we always go for the <laughs> the soldering and and the pro press uh, first. Yeah, and this is kind of a last resort. And just you know. Sometimes you can get in a scenario where those other tools, it's just too tough to pull something off, and then the shark bites occasionally. It'll it'll, it'll really uh, it'll save you in, in a certain scenario. Yeah. So yeah, I really like. I'm impressed with this. Yeah, I the really, Ukenar system. Yeah, I'm really impressed with that. Yeah. No, it's it's a it's a it's a real cool system, and we're all all use this as um on tankless water heaters if there's a recirculation pump and we we run a recirculation line for it i'll use the the three quarter inch packs under the house to make a, a return loop so tell me uh when you're when you're installing this under a house what what is the required uh, strapping for this because I, I i never see this stuff strap properly you know what i would i would i would say about every four feet would be a, at least okay. a good a it's good pretty reference. rigid it, yeah, it, actually, it, it is it is pretty rigid. Yeah, it is rigid, so it's not so, going to sag unless it already has a bend in it. And then, yeah. when we um, when we strap it, we use these plastic straps. This is a, just a very simple plastic strap with a nail in it to nail it to you know the wood underneath the house, and it just um, just snaps right in place, right over the pipe like that. And we tack the nail in, and this way it's plastic on plastic. We don't we don't. We don't want to use any metal plumber's tape on this either. You don't want metal touching plastic yeah. rubbing long term. Maybe it yep. could create an issue. So it is okay, obviously. So I just want to point out, I, I think it's pretty obvious, but I'll say it anyway, that it's okay to run this through a floor into the crawl space. You, you know what? It, it is okay. You definitely want to make sure you have stud guards on it to protect from someone driving a nail through in the future, a screw. Right. Kind of... Um, the, I've, I've done a couple of repipes where we've done pecs and what we would do is we would run the pecs underneath the house in the crawl space and then the risers coming up we would put copper for the risers that's a good point i'm glad you mentioned that because i almost forgot to bring that up good point uh sometimes i go into homes and i see pecs coming right through the wall for the toilet supply Right, and it's all wobbly. I'm like, that ain't right. Yeah, it's not right. They make. Um, is there a code for that? Is it? Yeah, it's it's supposed to be a, a rigid pipe, kind of strapped coming okay. out. Right, and they make um, they make a copper fitting. It's like a, a ninety where you could, you, if you wanted, you could connect the pecs in the wall, okay. and then coming out of the wall, it's it's copper, and you're able to fasten that inside. Exactly, the wall. it has screw holes like a bracket. You could screw onto yeah. some wood, make it real rigid. Um, but I would say another common way is like what I said, we'll put, you know, copper piping in the wall just because it's stronger. If someone ever drives a nail through, we'll still put stud guards, of course, right. but just a little more rigid in the wall. But then under the house where it's exposed, we'll put the pecs because you can see. And it. I've seen um, I've seen hose bibs, copper coming out of the exterior wall of a house and I'm going like this with it. And it's, it's just shaking. It's moving back and forth in and out. And then right. I get under the house and I could see. I always get had, nervous stuff like that when I run into stuff like that too. That they had, uh, they had the pecs connected to the copper, but they didn't have the copper mounted. Right. It was, it was just loose. It was just a piece of pipe just sticking through the wall. They didn't mount it properly so that the pecs in that would just stay stable. You know. Yeah, you really want to go the extra mile to you know strap stuff down good in in those scenarios because then the next guy, like you come along, John, as loose as a tooth, and you're thinking, what's going on? Or me, I'm working on something outside, and then. It's it's the pipe shaking under the house, and you're like, oh no, now I gotta see what's going on down there, and make sure it's actually connected. <laughs> so you're afraid when you turn the water back on when it's at least as a tooth under the house. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, that's that's a really that was a really good display of uh, some interesting stuff. And when you said you can attach either one to copper, yes. So are you soldering that? So what you would do, or we could talk about the the Hoopinar system first. Yeah, I would put in... Did you have a piece of copper here still, John? Yeah, let me grab that. (laughs) 
what we would do, yeah, we would we would clean this, clean both ends, you know, with sandpaper and a brush, and then put flux, put put these together, you know, like so. And then we would we would go ahead, we would solder this joint here. So that would this is brass, this is copper. So they would they would solder together, and make it a, a leak 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 free joint. Mm -hmm. And then when it cooled down, we wouldn't want to leave it hot. We'd give it a chance to cool down, and then we would. Um, you know, take our piece of the expansion pipe, expand it with the ring, and then we would uh, fit it on here. And now that's how we would uh, transition to copper. So if it was, was coming down through a wall, then we could ex put a piece right. of PEX between the two there right, with right. the expansion rings and connect it under the house like that. Got it. So, Interesting. So how long does it take for that to cool down once you started that? I mean, if you're just letting it sit there alone, maybe like five minutes, something okay. like that. It could take a little bit. But usually we, we let it sit for a minute and get a little impatient and put a wet rag <laughs> on it and clean it up. <laughs> um, but just, yeah, it's, it's, it's good to let it cool a little bit naturally. You don't want to put water on it right okay. away. Interesting. Um, and you said there is, a way to, there is a way to fasten this to galvanized. Yes. Yeah, so they, they make all sorts of adapters um, for the pecs, like uh, instead of having a solder joint on this side, they make one that would be like a male adapter, male iron pipe thread. Mm -hmm. So you could just go ahead and Teflon tape and pipe dope and screw that right into a galvanized fitting. And then you could put the, the, the expansion ring, the open R system uh, coming off of it. Okay. So yeah, they even have, um, they have all sorts of fittings uh, and like shark bite, you know, you could, you can connect shark bite on both sides. If you want to use a shark bite coupling or 90, they also have pro press where you could do a pro press copper, which is like a, a compression type of uh, a newer tool. Mm -hmm. So you could do pro press on one side and then a PEX on the other. So there's a lot of different variations of, of things you can oh, okay. do for sure to adapt to. Wow. Um, that's awesome, man. That's uh, I, I learned a few things today. That's awesome. Yeah.